Computerised information sets are used for a multitude of applications and we're usually totally unaware of them. From the Met Office to government, from medical records to bird population numbers, data sets these days are usually huge. The British Library online catalogue, for example, lists 14 million items from its collection. Enormous data sets like these have become commonplace due to the internet and cheap storage. YouTube and Flickr are just two examples that many people use on a daily basis, oblivious to what's going on under the bonnet. The mechanics behind data sets are complex and we seem to take them for granted. Technologies like Google Maps open up the world, but with them come new data set challenges. When you send an inquiry to Google Maps, there's a stunning amount of computing going on in the fraction of a second it takes to get a response. Making it work, and work fast, is a formidable achievement. So, who is in the front line tackling these challenges? It's people like the British Library, who understand the fundamentals of computing, and so have the capability to take things to another exciting level. Without this understanding, the options for work in the area of big information are limited. Andrew Eland from Google knows how essential it is for technology-facing employees to understand the fundamentals of computing. Our recruiting process can be quite tough, and many of the questions we ask in interviews have a mathematical component, and we cover areas like algorithms and statistics. It's unlikely that we'd hire anybody for a software engineer at Google who didn't have a strong mathematical ability. The reason why we do this is because the space of computing is so fast that you really need a strong understanding of the constant fundamentals in order to get anywhere. Many problems involving large amounts of information involve splitting it into small pieces. So Google Maps, for example, the map is built out of very many small images. And we do this so that we can use thousands of machines to render these images in parallel. Now, a naive approach would be to split the world into equal areas and then render those on each machine. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't work well in practice because the machine rendering, say, Tokyo, will take much, much longer to complete the work than the machine rendering, say, Plainville in Kansas. And to get around that and distribute the load evenly requires some non-trivial maths. In our case, spherical geometry. We're so used to search engines that very few of us ever think about the deep science behind them. Google best nightlife in London, and you get nearly 11 million possible sites. But do we ever think about how this actually happens? The technical details are complex, naturally, and difficult to absorb without a mathematical understanding. At a very basic level, a search engine uses vectors and matrices to index and then perform a query. But obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. Music recognition applications, such as Shazam, that can tell you the name of a track and the artist from just a 10 to 20 second blast, often played in a very noisy environment like pubs or clubs, are based on music matching algorithms. Let's give it a go. The algorithms find the components of the track that are most prominent a sample of these are tied to the time signature and the track ID. So the track is processed from, say, four megabytes of data into perhaps a thousand data points, or the track's fingerprint, if you like. Ah, here's the answer now. At the other end of the mobile, the same analysis was performed to pick out these prominent components or frequencies, resulting in a group of frequency time pairs. The database of known songs was then searched, and the mobile can tell you the track. Shazam! The development of products like Shazam is at the very forefront of computer science. It's where the thrill is, where boundaries are pushed and ideas made real. 
and maths is central to it all. Mathematical models are also at the very heart of many aspects of science and engineering. Mathematical modelling is very important in many areas. For instance, well-known areas include weather forecasting, the environmental models for climate change, and also aerodynamic flow around Formula One cars. Less well-known areas are equally important for our everyday lives. For instance, work here in the School of Computing at the University of Leeds focuses on uh, chemical diffusion through skin, lubricant properties in an engine, and also cancer tumour growth. All of these scenarios take mathematical equations representing the physical world and then represent them numerically on computers. In order to solve these at levels of detail which are fine enough to represent reality, we have to generate vast quantities of data. This data then needs further analysis, be that using visualisation or statistical techniques. You've heard how important it is to understand fundamentals and mathematics if you want to pursue a career or carry out research in areas involving huge data sets, which are the exciting immediate future of computing. You need that understanding to back up theories and take ideas forward. If you put in the effort now, you'll reap the rewards in the future. Like Google Maps, the world will open up in front of you. Apple launched the iPod in 2001. A sensation at the time, but a pretty common accessory now. But innovation continues with the development of new technology, such as the convergence of mobile phones, iPods, and the multitude of applications that go along with it. Within a few years, it's probable that every single piece of music ever produced could be downloaded onto a single iPod. That's quite amazing. And the people working on these advances all have that vital combination of computer science and computational creativity along with a solid understanding of the fundamentals behind it all. Could that be you one day?